Okay, so I changed my mind. <laughs> I listened to the first broadcast and I actually do like it. I just can't see who is on until you comment. Um, so I want you to comment and I want you to let me know that you are here and that you hear me okay. It actually sounds pretty good. I think the sound quality is very good. Um, maybe I do like be live. <laughs> so um, I want to welcome you and say hello and good afternoon to those who are listening live and to those who will listen to the replay. This is Beverly Vaughn and I am coming to you just to talk today for a little bit. I just want to have a quick chat. Hello again, Regina. I do like the be live. I actually listened to a few minutes of it and I do like it. I just can't see who is here until you comment. So um, I don't think I care for that, but I do like so far. I'm sitting here in the room in my office and just have had some thoughts around some things about hindrances and things that are that seem to be hindering um, us as believers, that are hindering us as um, business owners, those who are also um, who are in ministry as well as the marketplace. Thank you so much. I appreciate your prayer, your prayers, Regina. I appreciate them. I still need them. Um, keeping myself busy, trying to keep myself busy on this sabbatical that I'm on. Um, hi, Veronica. How are you? Um, again, I need you to comment. I can't. This this program is not letting me see who's here um, and who's coming up. So talk to me. Let me know that you're here and that you're listening. Um, just popped in because I want to ask a question. I want us to kind of think and start kind of, um, well, not start, but I want us to think about the things that are hindering us and stopping us from pursuing our assignments from pursuing our callings, from pursuing our places of destiny. Um, I wanna know what is hindering us. Thank you, Regina, I appreciate it. I wanna know what is stopping us from possessing our land, as would be said in scripture in the book of Joshua. Um, the land belongs to us, your assignments, your callings, your gifts, your talents, they belong to you, but you have to possess them. Um, if you sit on them, they go to waste. Um, I, I, I know that I heard somebody say that the most, the richest place in the earth is the cemetery because it is so filled with people um, with potential that went to the grave, with assignments that went to the grave with callings that went to the grave and never got accomplished. So I wanna ask you that question. Facebook um, can kind of be, uh, I, I, you know, Facebook can be kind of deceiving. Um, hello, Dana, God bless you, how are you? Facebook can kind of be deceiving because oftentimes we feel like when we like something, we are becoming a partaker. But that is just simply not true. Just because you like something does not mean that you partake in it, that you become a part of it. You have to, we have to go beyond, um, oftentimes we have to go beyond ourselves. So I just want to ask that question. You know what you're called to, you know what you are assigned to. You know the gifts that you have been given and the talents. And I often talk about purpose. In my business, my title that I utilize is Redevelopment Catalyst because I help people not necessarily um, start new uh, ventures, new things. Sometimes they are new, but most often I help people redevelop what they've already started that did not succeed the first time. Success comes eventually, but you can't stop because I'm having a hot flash, <laughs> a private summer. Um, you can't stop your process of pursuing because it failed the first time or because you didn't get 
the support that you needed the first time. If I would have stopped um, years back because I wasn't getting the support or I wasn't, um, you know, uh, uh, finding things working out quite like I wanted them to the first time, the second time, the third time. I had to, um, I know what you're saying, Regina, I got you. I, I didn't miss that. I did not miss that. Um, you have to kind of push past yourself. Let me, let me just say that. You have to push past yourself. You have to push yourself to pursue. I would not allow um, things and people and stuff to hinder me from going beyond where I knew I couldn't stay. I said something really good right there. I said something really good. Um, I wouldn't let things and people and stuff hinder me and, and stop me from pursuing what I knew I was destined and called to do. I did not have support um, originally like I desired it. I did not have um, the support of the people. And let me say this to you, the people that you would expect to really support you, push you, be behind you, um, before you move you forward, be in the ring with you, will shock you as who will not. Talk to me. Tell me if I am telling the truth. People that you expect to be for you for the long haul will drop like flies when you start to succeed and excel and be successful in what they will tell you you are able to do until you start doing it. So you cannot, sometimes you have to learn um, to not even tell people what you're doing and why you're doing it. And, and I'm going to tell you, your family will be the first place that you have to kind of stop sharing because um, they're the ones that know you the best, they're closest to you. And oftentimes they don't mean harm, but it's been so long that they've been, and you've been letting people tell you what to do and getting opinion. You know, one thing that we often do is, you know, we share things with people. I'm thinking about doing this. I'm, I'm, what do you think of this? And if they don't approve, it stops us. It turns us around. So um, you have to push past that. You know, Regina, when you say why, that's a big question. There are a lot of answers to that. Some of the why is people see you excelling and doing what they wish they would do and wish they would have done but would not pursue and would not go after it and let people stop them. So they desire to stop you. Some is unconscious. Sometimes people just unconsciously don't know that become a hindrance to you and unconsciously don't realize that they have become a part of your problem and are no longer your solution. So sometimes people are just, um, envious, just hateful, and just don't want to see you succeed. Um, sometimes people in their own misery um, want you to be miserable with them. And a lot of times you just have to get delivered from that. You have to just simply get delivered from public opinion. I preach that a lot. I am an evangelist. I am also a business owner. I don't mix the two. Um, I use the same principles everywhere because the principles of God work. But as an evangelist, I don't bring um, Christianity into the marketplace, that my Christian language, my Christian dress, I don't bring that into the marketplace. So those are things that I had to learn. Um, I have a business coach. I have a financial coach. Um, that have taught me things. Um, I have a life coach, um, people that I 
um, that are helping me and that have helped me throughout my life to accomplish things, to get where I need to, to get. You need an outside source that will see um, outside of your situation that's not in your circle per, uh, um, per se, that can see things from a perspective that you can't see them, that don't mind hurting your feelings, that don't mind telling you where you are wrong, that don't mind confronting your failures and helping you to success. That's what a coach does. A coach is not a friend. A coach um, can be a friend, but will help you push past you and will give you principles and systems. And sometimes you're failing just because you don't have the right system in place. Um, that's what I do. That's what we do in our business model. But I want you to internalize why you won't pursue your personal success. And I want you to not just internalize and figure out why that, you know, like um, you said earlier, Regina, I have to, you know, get out of my own way. Well, when will you get out of your own way? When will you just do it? When will you just, when will you just move? And excuses have killed so many ministries. Excuses have killed um, uh, opportunities, business opportunities, excuses. You are filled with potential. You are gifted. You have talents. You have things that you are able to do. But there's some things that you're able to do so much better that you don't know that you can do them. You need someone to pull them out. You need someone to dig them out. You need someone to help you get. You need a strategy session. Oh, God. Oh, Bishop Stephen, uh, Steve Campbell. Bishop Campbell, how are you? God, I, I miss our chats. We, we don't chat anymore. I don't know when that stopped. We don't chat anymore. But I'm glad that you're listening to me. But... You have to, we have to, first of all, get delivered from public opinion. We have to get delivered from ourselves. We have to stop making excuses. We have to stop waiting for somebody else to do it for us. We have to stop thinking that we know what it takes to get where we are going. We have to um, stop being lazy. We have to stop um, being tight with our money. Money is not meant for you to keep. Money is meant for you to multiply and grow. I am determined. I am determined to leave a legacy for my children, my grandchildren, my big why. You need a big why. Why? You need something to push you. Your why has to push you. My why is my grandchildren. I want to leave them, I must leave them financial legacy, which means I have to work and I have to build. This is America. Now, there are a lot of disadvantages to us as African Americans. I understand, Regina, yes, you do. And um, if you message me, because I have actually started a private group outside of Facebook, outside of everything that I am going to pour into some people, but I am strategically choosing who I let in that circle because I have learned people will talk a good game, but I'm not interested in talkers. I'm not interested even in people who are just interested. I will work with and help and move with people who actually will move. Mm, my God. Yolanda, you are part of the group. Absolutely. You can, I am sharing things. I am imparting some things. I am um, giving some insight and, and it is not, it is um, not costing anything. While there are times that I will require you to participate with your money because that is how you really participate. Kingdom mindset means you have to understand the voice of money how money operates, that you have to understand um, 
how to get money to work for you. You have to send it. You have to talk to it, but you have to build it and grow it. You have to establish accounts, investment accounts. You have to have a savings account for investing. All of these things are part of my coaching program that I am sharing. You have to have exactly, exactly, exactly. I like that. I like that. Your mindset has to change. I like that. Mindset has to change. It's got to change. Regina, I, I, I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. Your mindset has got to change. No more poverty has to be your mindset. But then you have to push past just making that um, something that you talk about. Okay, I, I'm not going to do this anymore. You have to do something. You cannot have and sit back and accept all the excuses that you have been accepting and even giving yourself at um, many times in your walk. Um, one of the things that I have shared with many of you and that I share with my clients that I share with you publicly, you have to become a student of what you lack. If you lack finances, you have to become a student and get understanding on money matters, how to understand money, how to make it work, how to, and because if you don't get a different mindset about it, you will never have it. Okay. If you don't desire and then push forward and do what you got to do to get a new money mindset, you will never have it. Um, you will never attract what you will not pursue. You won't attract what you won't pursue. Thank you. Thank you. I, I absolutely, absolutely. Talk to me. I got a few people talking to me. Many of you are watching um, the broadcast, but I want you to talk to me. I can't see who's watching. I really can't, but I want you to talk to me. Talk back. Let's talk through this. You have to push past. You are, let me put it to you like this. You are here and you want to be there, but in order to get there, there's a gulf in between that's called the Valley of Execution. There's some things you have to put in place. There's some executions that have to take place. You have to go to school. You have to get some skills. You have to hire a, cro a coach. You need a mentor. You need some people in your corner who are going to push you. And everybody is not going to push you. Everybody is not in your corner. And get over that. Stop, stop being bothered by that, bogged down by it. Move past it. Get delivered from people who won't support you. So what? Move on. Grow up. Get delivered from that stuff. Ministry leaders, you have awesome ministry. You have awesome giftings. You have abilities. You have capacities that you will not develop. Oh, God. That's good, Regina, doing it right now. That is good. Very good. Get delivered from, from trying to feel like you can do this by yourself. You can't because if you could, you would have by now. If you could, you would have by now already been past and moved past um where you are right now. You know, the church, I'm going to talk about the church for a minute. The church has lost her passion for evangelism. Many people are picking it back up again and starting to realize, wait a minute, we are no longer passionate about evangelism. We're no longer passionate about uh, soul winning, about outreach, um, about uh, altar ministries. We're no longer passionate about that because we think we're doing it. We think we've got it. Um, churches half empty irritate me. It bothers me because the word is so good. It's so rich. 
And the spirit of God is so awesome. And, and we would rather um, make people the problem as to why they aren't coming rather than understanding there's been a shift. There's been a shift in society. There's been a shift in the mindsets of people. There's been a shift because things have gotten harder. They've gotten tougher and people no longer want to be brutalized into salvation. Oh God, I'm, I'm going to lose half of you right now. I know I am, but I'm okay with that because I'm delivered from you. People no longer want to be attacked in order to get saved or to live holy, to live righteous. Teach me, disciple me, grow me, build me, train me, establish me. Don't beat me up because I won't let you talk to me any kind of way. It's too much... Um, of the mentality of um, I'm going to control you into salvation. That has to stop. I thank God for the freedom um, in my uh, own assembly church where I attend. I thank God for the freedom in many of the places that I minister. I bless God because um, people don't want to be uh, lorded over, for lack of a better word. I don't want you to um, talk about me. It, it, there's liberty in God. I like that. Um, it's too much. I, I, I don't know the words that I'm looking for, but I, I really want you, I want you to understand. And, and the point that I really want to make is the church has lost her appetite for evangelism. And training is needed. The courses that I teach on evangelism, I go around the country and even internationally teaching. Yes, Regina, no more bondage. People don't want to be abused into salvation. I like that. That's good. I teach outreach. I give ideas, practical wisdom for outreach. One of the things that I have taught people to do is if you live in an area where there are colleges um, and that is about to come up. College, um, when, when the students are moving back into their dormitories, no strings attached outreach will work. No strings attached means I will get with the college, get with the administration, let them know that my church is in the area, in the community, we own our community. And one of the things that we do is provide the students with a meal as they are moving in. Order some pizzas, have them in the lobbies. You know, you know um, put your church information up um, in a professional manner. Get a banner made that says, enjoy this as you move in from XYZ Church you are in our community, so we own this campus. Know that we are praying for you, we're here for you, and we want you to enjoy this as you move in. Leave your church information. Don't require them to come. Do it for free. People will begin to talk about your caring for them. You never have to do it, and they will come. That's an idea for outreach. It's an idea for evangelism. Um, do, do tent services don't work like they used to. They just don't. So if you're going to do a tent service, you can't do it the way that you've always done it in the past. And you can't um, play the songs that the church likes. You have to play the songs that draw people from outside of the church. You can't play nearer my God to thee on the street. Once you get them in, that's good. But nearer my God to me will not draw them to stop their car at the tent. But Travis Green will. Ha. Kirk Franklin will. Because that's the music that people listen to who don't go to church. We listen to it in church too. I like them both. But when you want to draw the world, you have to do it from a different perspective. And you can't pass out tracks give them something in their hand 
Um, you can do a little bit of it, but make sure that the tracks are up to date. They can't be tracks that uh, you haven't updated in 50 years. You can't pass out the tracks that grandma and them used to pass out when they were in the church. Oh God, I just lost a whole bunch of people. Be media relevant. Everyone is on social media today. Everybody. If you aren't on social media, if you don't have social media presence, you don't have presence. You have to be on social media. You have to be um, relevant with it. People will tune you out if you are not relevant. I teach this, train it. I teach ministers, leaders, bishops. Um, I've taught it many places how to evangelize this generation. But you won't subscribe to it. Many have, but many have not. So there you sit with a church that is not growing, with people who cannot receive from the ministry what they desire. I can't tell you how many people reach out to me from all of the churches around privately, and I don't have a problem with it, but they're struggling with things that they cannot and have not found anyone in their local assembly to talk to about it. Something's wrong with that. I, I want to help you. I want to help ministries. I want to help develop that. But I really want to get you to think about what is hindering you from success, not only in business, but also in ministry. I minister. I have first ladies who are clients. Changing how they do church, revolutionizing, coming out of their boxes. You can be awesome from the second chair. You can be awesome from the first chair as a woman, but perhaps you have to change your approach. Perhaps you have to change how people perceive you and you need someone who's outside looking in, someone from the outside who can mentor you and get you there. You can't be quiet. You can't be passive with all the things that you're assigned to and the places that you will, that you will, uh, possess if you follow me if you follow someone who is in the place where you desire to be find somebody it does not have to be me i'm good i tell you right now i'm good i'm real good i'm an excellent teacher of the word of god i'm an excellent preacher i know how to make your business prosper i've trained learned got behind and with people uh, who were where I wanted to be so that I could get there too. I, I enlarged my territory, my pond. I didn't just stay around people who were like me. I went into different areas and I go into different areas to get what I don't have to, to um, train in and, and courses and skills and certifications and things that I need to make you your best you. So that being said, you guys aren't talking to me. You, a couple of you are, but I wanted to share that today. Stop letting things hinder you. Hindrances. Bless you, Sister Dorothy. Pastor Dorothy, how are you? I want you to stop being hindered by people. Stop being hindered by yourself. Oh, made your first move today. Awesome. Tyra, that is phenomenal. Wonderful. Awesome. Awesome. Let me tell you. I have some websites of mine that I want to share with you, um, but I want to push you. I, I'm not playing with this. I'm not playing with you. I'm going to cut some of you loose because you listen, but you don't move. And I can't, I don't, I, I really can't. I love you. And I don't mind who is a partaker and who follows me and all that kind of stuff. But I'm not going to work with people who won't move, who won't take initiative, who won't step out of their box, who won't. Do what I tell you to do to help you get where you need to be. So um, I have a ministry website that can teach you and train you in the word of God. It is www.themessengerseries.com. I have my ministry website where you can book me to come for various events to train, to teach, to preach. 
um, to help build your ministry. I'm not a pastor. I don't want to be a pastor. I'm not trying to build a church. I'm not trying to have a following. I am owning and walking in my assignments. What God has assigned me to, anointed me to, I own it. I walk in it. I live in my purpose zone. And I want to get you there too. My ministry website is www.athisfeet.com. Dot info info. Those are my ministry websites. That's Evangelist Beverly Vaughn. My business is Awakening Initiatives LLC. I'm an executive coach, mentor, keynote speaker for colleges, university, um, corporations. I am also a consultant for churches. Um, for ministries, consultant to help you build um, your church in the manner from a staff perspective that you want to see it um, grow and build. I'm a consultant when there are problems and things going on that you need an outside voice for um, ministry as well as business and corporation. That website is www. I've shortened it to Awake I. A-W-A-K-E-I dot com. When you put that in, it brings you to www.awakeninginitiatives.com. There's a lot there. There's a strategy session that you can book from right there. Click book here so that we can strategize. It is not free. It is never going to be free. It is um, unless... I'm, I feel that I want to do something, that something I'm led to do something, but that is always going to be a paid session because it costs me to give you what I'm giving you. And even David said, I will not give the Lord what did not cost. In the church, we are afraid to talk about money. We're afraid to invest in ourselves because of wrong teaching and wrong doctrine. We are, we don't tithe, we don't give, and we think that money cometh is a wealth strategy. It is not. If you're not a tither, money is not coming because it is not attracted to you because you won't do what you need to do in order to attract it to you. I teach money mindset. I have a master class for teaching about money and investing and growing. I have a master class that teaches about purpose, finding your purpose, defining it, how to find your story, how to monetize your story. All of that you find on my business website. So I'm available to you. I'm here for you. But I need you to internalize why you won't move, why you won't push past. You know you can do more. You know there is more that is assigned to you. But will you be in this same place next year that you are now, that you've been for years? I'm going to do it. Uh, yes, I know I can. I'm going to. Some of you, we have had a strategy session. And by now, you should be a client. Many of you are clients, but there are some of you that should be a client by now. When I knew there was more for me, I made it happen. I paid a lot of money to get where I am. I invested in me. I made it happen. I didn't um, try to figure it out. I made it happen, which is why this time last year, I am in a better place. I am further along than I was last year. I am soaring. Hallelujah. As my coach would say, I am a woman who is soaring. And so can you. Male, female, teenager, young person. Um, I, I go to colleges and I've taught at uh, local colleges here how to 
um, establish yourself with a money mindset. I've taught how to um, walk in purpose to college students. You think college students don't have money. They have money to pay for what they want to pay for to invest in. Colleges will bring you in as a speaker if you have something to say and you have something that they want. You already own what people are looking for. You just won't develop yourself, establish yourself, and so that you can be found, so that what you already possess can begin to work for you and get you money. I know you won't, Yolanda, because I won't let you. I'm not going to let you be in the same place. I will not let you be in the same place next year. In three months, you're not going to be in the same place that you are now. That's where I'm going. So I met with some of you three months ago, two months ago, and nothing has changed. Nothing has trimmed. You haven't moved past the point of being excited about what you heard. That's the thing. We can get excited about hearing our possibility and our potential and what we can do, but never move into doing it. So that said, I'm going to end here and please share this with on your pages, encourage others and go to the website, purchase, order, download today. Stop delaying your upward movement. Stop delaying your next level ministry. Stop delaying your next level business. Stop delaying your next level you. No more delay. No more procrastination. No more waiting for somebody else to do it for you. Get moving. Push yourself and let me push you further. So have a great day. Make it a great day. Share this broadcast. Bishop um, Campbell, I love you. All of you. I'm so glad that you're here, that you listen, that you are encouraged. That's my motive, to encourage you and push you to accomplish and to live in purpose. Purpose is greater than talent. Many of you are talented and you stay in your talent zone but you never attain purpose because talent has made you comfortable. Purpose will get you wealthy though. Talent makes you comfortable. Purpose will get you to your wealthy place, not just financially, but spiritually, mentally, and all aspects of life. You will be made whole in your purpose. It's a comfortable place. It's an exciting place and you deserve to be there. You deserve to own your purpose. No matter who doesn't think you do, who doesn't feel that you should accomplish what you will accomplish, no matter who's not with you, there's so many more who are for you, waiting for you, than those who are against you. And that baby is Bible. So enjoy your day. Be blessed, be encouraged, but move. Get moving and stop letting things hinder you, hold you back. Do what you need to do to get where you need to be. That's right, Pastor Dorothy, you deserve to own your purpose. That's right, Yolanda, approve of yourself. I approve of myself. Oh, thank you so much. This is Beverly Vaughn. And I approve this message and every word that I have said in this message, I approve it. Be blessed.